Chapter 28 Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie Since it's November, the month where we pick up movie and TV show adaptations, we have chosen the novel Murder on the Orient Express by the renowned mystery author Agatha Christie, adapted by Kenneth Branagh. So hop with us on the Orient Express with a second-class carriage for a spoiler-free review and a first-class spoiler carriage for those of you who have read the book. Choose your ticket wisely. We post on Wednesdays. Turn the page. Welcome to another chapter of Between the Pages. If this is your first time joining us on our podcast, we welcome you. My name is Nesma. And my name is Hanin. We host this podcast together where we review books and recommend them for you. We usually have non-spoiler chapters for those of you who want a spoiler-free review of a book. And a spoiler chapter where we simply review the book to every single detail. However... We've recently started doing them, doing the chapter parts combined, as in you'd get a non-spoiler at the beginning of the chapter, and then we would warn you when we're going to start the spoiler chapter. Mm-hmm. Spoiler part. Spoiler part, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, basically we'll combine the non-spoiler and spoiler into one episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and today we have, uh, since this is our... TV show slash movie Movie. month. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) November is usually for that purpose. Yeah. Uh, We have chosen Murder on the Orient Express. Yeah. Simply because we know that Death on the Nile is going to come out soon. So Mm -hmm. we thought maybe we'd refresh our minds a little. And the trailer is amazing, guys. (laughs) I've seen it. Nisma hasn't. So, yeah. No, I haven't. <laughs> you watch it after we record. I didn't know it was out. I, 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 like, I had this good idea. What if it's out? And I searched it and I'm like, oh, yeah. it's there. And I watched it. Wow. <laughs> wow. I was simply curious if they filmed it here in Egypt because I saw this post a while ago that they're coming here to Egypt to film. Mm-hmm. And I thought of... Wow, what if I can get on the crew or something? Like, <laughs> nothing came up. Like, it's so under... Closed off, yeah. yeah. Under the radar. Under the radar. And recently, I was in the Guna Film Festival, and uh, one of the actors, Ali Fazal, I think he's Indian. Huh? Uh, he was there, and he gave a master class that I didn't attend, but... <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, I was... Why did you go there? <laughs> I was sick that day. I got sick the whole trip. <laughs> But, like, I was fighting it. When, like, when I can't get up and go, I went, like, Oh, yeah. you got sick. Mm. Oh, no. Yeah. Right, you were sick when you left. Uh, when, yeah. Right, I knew yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk about Murder on the Orient Express. Yeah. That was, I think, the movie was two years ago. It was in yeah. 2018, mm-hmm. I think. Yep. Maybe. Anyway, yeah, I've watched it. And we both have watched it. So. We watched it together. I no, think. no, no. I've no? watched. It was. I was on vacation. Who did I watch it. it with? Oh, my brother. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I rarely watch movies with my brother, yeah. so it's like Harry Potter. Rare occasion. Yeah. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. There's only like certain things that mm-hmm. he watches. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so we we read this book knowing the end. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We did know the end, and I think that kind of spoiled it for us, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And I was, this wasn't, okay, for the non-spoiler, I'm not going to say, of course, for those of you who have watched the movie or haven't yet, um, we're not going to spoil anything I guess with the mystery thing, wait till you read the book. Yeah, Yeah. wait till you read it. Uh Um, I wouldn't watch the movie first, maybe read the book. And then your expectations will be met even higher and higher and higher in the movie. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Like, the actor is mind-blowing. The actor and director. And director. And Johnny Depp. I mean, Johnny yeah, Depp. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love, <laughs> who doesn't love Johnny Depp? Uh-huh. So, I think, like, simply the movie was the reason why we read this book. Yes. And I even got the movie cover. 
Yeah. It's my thing. <laughs> I like to wait till the movie is out and I can get the movie cover of a book mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. watch the movie first. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I would have loved to do that, but I kind of like the one with the... Uh, like mm. the bubbles coming out of the 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 train Smoke. like it's yeah it's like the blood mm. you know i love that and i don't know i kind of liked it more than the movie cover but mm. the movie cover is still very very pretty it's yeah, very it is. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean the movie cover itself is very amazing mm -hmm. so yeah anyway we have a summary to read for those of you who don't know what the book is about mm -hmm. to get an idea mm -hmm. and I think it's better to read summaries here I know you can read them anywhere but uh, <laughs> it's better than us like confusing you I think yeah I think we would just ramble on if we just summarize the whole thing ourselves <laughs> Goodreads just you know does it for us <laughs> so they say uh, the book description says Just after midnight, a snowdrift stops the Orient Express in its tracks. The luxurious train is surprisingly full for the time of the year. But by the morning, it is one passenger fewer. An American tycoon lies dead in his compartment, stabbed a dozen times, his door locked from the inside. Isolated and with a killer in their midst, Detective Hercule Poirot must identify the murderer in case he or she deci decides to strike again. I guess it does sound kind of thrilling mm -hmm. once you read the summary. It's like, oh my god, they're in this locked space. Mm -hmm. They can't leave. Yeah. They have to figure out who the murderer is. And it's quite clear one of these people on the train is the murderer. Like, mm -hmm. it can't be anyone else. Yes. Especially the last line, if they would strike again. So yeah. It makes you, like, want to read the book. Exactly. So actually, we didn't read the summary before reading the book because no, we, we already didn't. had watched the movie. Yeah, we kind of yeah. knew what it was about mm -hmm. and what were our expectations, and were they met or not? Mm, they weren't. <laughs> yeah, I think my expectations were like way up there, mm -hmm. you know, and they weren't met even in the slightest. And I think it has something to do with Agatha Christie's style of writing. writing. Yes, yes, I agree. Like, this was our first novel for Agatha Christie. And I remember in high school, people were mad about her. About they were her. Like, they yeah. buy all her books and they keep reading and reading and reading mystery after another, yeah. after another, or after another. I don't know. We aren't the mystery story No, genre not at all. People, no, no. We picked it up because of the movie and, like, I'll say this, the movie was better. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly. Sorry, Agatha Christie fans. We're sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry, kind of. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, look, the, the thing is that Agatha Christie's style of writing is very narrative. No, I'm sorry, very descriptive and not narrative. Mm. It's just describing the things that are happening. Very and very factual and dry. Yes. It's dry. Yes. Oh yeah. my god, you just explained it. Uh -huh. Factual and dry. Right. Yes. Yani, it doesn't get that. But I think we're used to something else. Mm -hmm. We're used to Sarah J. Maas and Ver Veronica Roth and Marissa Mayer and mm. they're like such like such Cassandra full of Claire, yeah. Uh, full of passion mm. and so much um inner monologue that we're so used to that and knowing what the characters think mm -hmm. so once we start reading a story which is from the third point of view and we don't even get to know what they're thinking mm, or feeling yeah i mean like Hercule Poirot if you have watched Sherlock for example mm -hmm. like there is a mystery in or a murder in every episode yeah and you follow that and you're hooked with that okay mm -hmm. But there is also development in the character and a conflict that they have yes. to like overcome and yes. he has to grow in some way and develop feelings in a certain area or I think that's the problem. I think and her Kukra Rose is character very... is flat. It's flat, exactly. It's not dynamic mm -hmm. in any way. Yeah. He there's no progress, there's no change. He believes he's right, he's be he believes he's smart and 
who has the right answers to everything. He、mm-hmm. might even be a little bit snobbish, to be honest.、Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's what we felt reading it. And like in the in the movie, for example,、yeah. there was this bit about uh, him uh, measuring if the His two boiled eggs are the same height. <laughs> yeah, and, like he was kind of quirky. And yeah, like this... kind of a little bit OCD,、mm-hmm. you know, going on. Yeah, he had character. <laughs> yeah, here it's just murder and I think facts. I, I think Hakuparo is more entertaining on screen.、Mm-hmm. Why? Because there's a lot to work with for an actor.、Mm-hmm. You know, because the character is so flat, he can make him dynamic in his own way. You know, he can take something and think, okay, I think he is this way because he likes it this way. You、mm-hmm. know, I think, or maybe something happened in his childhood that made him this person. You know? Yes, and. We have nothing. We have no insight whatsoever. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I, I keep wondering how did the director? I think he wrote the film as well、mm-hmm. and acted in it. He's amazing. You know, my first introduction to that director, Kenneth Branagh, I think,、hmm. um, was in、uh, Cinderella. He's the one who directed that movie, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway,、um, my point was. Wow, I lost track. Ah, <laughs>、uh, yes. I wonder what he was thinking when he adapted it. He put so much into it, so much color and layers and, and deepness and、yeah. thought. You know? Yeah. You need, unlike the book, can you? What did he find in there that he developed? I I don't see it. <laughs> really, I、yeah. I mean, it's kind of.、Uh, An art form in itself to、mm. take something that has no dynamic whatsoever、yeah. and to put dynamic into it,、yeah. you know, and I think that takes a lot of talent、mm-hmm. <laughs> because you don't want to offend people who love Agatha Christie as well. You、yeah. don't want to make it something else entirely. You still want to stay true to the character itself. Okay, let's imagine that we're, we were we were reading it, not having a background whatsoever to the story.、Mm-hmm. I think we would be carried away with. Um, the detail, the detail, or the evidence and the lies he caught, and、yeah. the detail. Yes, he noticed.、Mm-hmm. Like this carries you along. You want to know who, true, who committed the murder. Yeah, but that's just it. If that's your thing, <laughs> that's really just it. And it's. Th- I think it's for people also who love to find clues.、Mm. You know,、yeah. who like to figure it out. On, by themselves, yeah. Maybe、know? read between the lines. Maybe、yeah. we didn't do that and、no. got lazy because we already know. Yeah. But yes. I mean, I did kind of get lazy.、Mm. Yeah. The only thing that really got me through it was Dan Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had the audiobook with、uh, Kenneth Branagh,、yeah. so I felt like, so I felt like I'm more in the movie.、Uh-huh. You know? Well, Dan Stevens gave it a really beautiful twist, and、mm. I think it was I. I have such a fondness for Dan Stevens. It, now that I even recently stopped,、uh, f- finished watching Legion, so、oh, he's still very、show. fresh、uh-huh. in my in my head. Yeah. So I have this familiar like thing in my mind where I'm still very attached to the voice.、Uh-huh. So I think Dan Stevens was like really the only thing that was keeping me going with the story, <laughs> and I think the reason why people are so attached to these novels or Books, whatever you can call them,、um, are the shortness of them.、Mm. I think someone who wants to be a reader. Yeah, I remember you saying that. To yeah, me. someone yeah. who loves to be called a reader,、uh-huh. okay,、um, or to be in that niche with with like bookworms and everything,、mm. but they can't read like huge novels and don't have the nerve or something. I don't、mm. know. Maybe they don't like fantasy or、uh, fiction or anything like that.、Mm-hmm. Um, I think Agatha Christie is the perfect thing for you. You know, it's、mm. not it's not a huge commitment. You still get the the ca- the same character who you know throughout the th- the series. There's、mm. are different series as well. There's one with、um, my mom is a huge fan of her Kruparo. She、really? watched、uh, his TV show.、Mm. She read、um, some of his nov some of the novels, but that was like years ago. And recently, she wa- she listens to like audio books in German. Though, yeah, in German. <laughs> <laughs> And、um, yeah, what was I gonna say? They're、um, short. 
You were saying. Yeah. They're short and... Oh, yes. There is another series with... I think it's from Agatha Christie as well. Her The character is named Miss Marple. Mm-hmm. It's a woman in this in this case, and she's British. Mm-hmm. So she has the same idea, and she she kind of tackles the 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 like the spectrum of like feminism and stuff like that, but in a subtle way, you know. Mm-hmm. And she's uh, an older woman. She's like in her sixties, maybe. Sixties, mm. sixties-ish. Okay. So she's an older woman. Yeah, yeah. And she's not like, a typical you know, character. Yes. No, not a typical character. Mm-hmm. And she's um, like fighting her way through, and she's like the wo- kind of woman who sticks her nose into <laughs> like, into <laughs> places where it shouldn't go. You yeah. know, and it, like I really enjoyed watching those on screen, but I'm not sure if I would enjoy reading that. You mm. know. Again, with like murder mystery and all that, I I, I feel like I'm repeating myself. I've ha- I have said that over and over in other podcasts. <laughs> oh, no, I keep thinking, are we going to read Death on the Nile though? I think um, it's quite bigger than mm-hmm. Murder on the Orient Express. Maybe we should read it before we watch the movie. Maybe. Yeah. So maybe. we're like surprised with uh-huh. the movie. Yeah. Maybe that's the I idea. love the trailer. I have no idea. I watched it twice. Wow. <laughs> you must watch okay, it. I have to watch it now. It's more darker. <laughs> like when Hercule Poirot appeared in the trailer, mm-hmm. it was quite late. Like same with the murder on the Orient Express, and his eyes were devastating. Like he was devastated. I mean, it felt like oh my god, and he was holding a gun at someone. <gasps> yes. No, a gunpoint. Yes. Oh my god, okay. Was, okay, do not intense. spoil for the people who haven't yeah. watched the Murder on the Orange yet. Anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, I think we'll stop here with the non spoiler and we'll move into the spoiler. So, for those of you who haven't read the book, um, stop here and go read the book and come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for the spoiler. Okay, so. We don't have that many comments, I think. Mm -hmm. I think we've pretty much said all the important stuff in the non-spoiler, but Mm. there are just like some few things. Um, For example, the narrative point of view that was in the novel was not bearable, for Mm. me at least. Like the third person, not knowing what they were thinking. Um, Like I have a pretty strong example for when... When uh, Mr. Ratchet was killed, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what Hercule was thinking because before that, we knew that Mr. Ratchet came to him and asked him for help. Even though Mr. Ratchet was a pretty shady guy, mm. did he feel guilty at least that he died without him helping or helping or refusing to help him? Because Hercule is someone who finds murderers. Mm. Okay, so what's wrong with finding a murderer before he's murdered <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. preventing someone's death you know yeah why look for the murderer I after think they're that killed would have been aslan a great dynamic in yes. his character feeling that it, when it, wherever he goes a murder happens and yes. like is death following him or something you something know? like that or the thought process of maybe um, maybe because of his OCD, mm. maybe he'd have like this uh, this kind of obsessive behavior. Like he'd feel guilty for not helping the guy, but later on, like he'd have this ambition. Like before, mm. he he refused even looking for the murderer. Mm. He said, "No, I want nothing to do with this." And I'm like, "Yeah, okay, fine." Maybe he maybe the thought process would have been, "I feel guilty. I don't want nothing to do with this. This was all my fault." Something like that. And then yeah. he'd use that guilt into making, into into, like, into finding the murderer, yeah. you know? But it was just pure, um, like, pure business, mm. you know? There was nothing, no soul, no passion in it, yes, you know? Yes, exactly, yes. So I and don't even know why he works, why he works this job, Yeah, you know? And, and like, there was something about, uh, like, for example, the first... We knew that Mr. Ratchet is evil. Mm-hmm. The way she she said it, or like 
described it. Described it was like, we're not babies. Give us kid that some. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. very plain. Show don't tell. Very like, plain. Yeah. Yes, it was like something I still. Struggle it was like with I'm twelve, <laughs> you know, and reading this. I would want to know this plainly, but not. I wish I had the quote, but or like <clears throat> the paragraph. But it goes on like that. Like he describes characters. In a way that's like like he des- he describes them from the outside, mm, you know, like yeah. what he sees, kind yeah. of like Sherlock, but more in a judging way. <laughs> no, no, no. Even even he knows what's inside them or what troubles them, but the way she writes about it is hmm. plain. I it is know. plain. Yeah, I mean, it is plain. Yeah, it felt like I'm reading a report. Journal, an article, not a novel, kida, where there is yeah. depth to characters. Exactly, and... which brings me to my point of the that the novel felt like literally a series of quen- questions and answers and answers. Like literally, you feel like you're walking from the tip of the train till the end of the train, just asking questions and getting answers. Mm-hmm. And it's like when you watch like a cop show, you know. Literally, the asking and asking questions and getting answers is literally only a small part of the of like the TV show, mm. you know. Yes. Where they ask the murderer, and that's probably like literally at the end of the episode where they ca- catch the murderer. Mm. And I hated that it was so part of the of the of the story. Like, yeah. do something else. <laughs> <laughs> it, the whole story was basically him interviewing. The, yes. the passengers. Yes, everything was Basically. just interviewing, interviewing, interviewing. So that's why I'm begging you. And there is no no soul to the place. Like yeah. he was in, uh, what's the country? Uh, the Arabic country. Like before Istanbul, he was in hmm. uh, something like Baghdad, I think. Yeah. No. Somewhere, I mean, An you, Arabic don't, country. you don't see the city, you don't yeah. see the architecture, you don't hear the people, or see the streets, like in the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, people might disagree with me and say the movies are easier to show, but I mean, no, in novels, like, where is it's the environment, the setting he's in? Yeah. It's just kida bordu on the go, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Something about this novel is, is classical, but not in the way as in it's a Pride and Prejudice novel. No, it's yeah. in the way where... In fourth grade, they gave you classic novels to read. <laughs> it's it's that it's that type of writing, you know. I remember or... saying before as well. I just remember that, mm-hmm. and that I think the reason why Agatha Christie is famous for because she did what she did first. Mm. You know, she's one of a kind because no one did what she did before her. Like mm. she's a woman, and she's writing these. Um, like murder mysteries and like people are on their toes, you know, because it's just new and like out of the box for them. Like mm-hmm. the time they were published for the first time. But so wasn't I think Sherlock Holmes published first. Arthur Conan, Arthur Conan Doyle. Doyle. Let's fact check that. First published in Great Britain by Collins, nineteen thirty-four. I think Conan Doyle was published in the 1800s. Really? Mm. Mm. My bad then, but I'm I'm like talking about the the aspect as a woman, of, as maybe. a woman, yeah. you know. And maybe at that time, I mean, of course, she she were didn't. Fond of that, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you compare it to Sherlock Holmes, of course, Sherlock Holmes wins all the way. Mm. But uh, for us, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it doesn't for other people, but. I think, like, she has such a huge collection. Like, mm. do you see any other author having this amount of books with one character and this constant ideas that she gets of making another mm. murder, murder mm. mystery and another like, one and another these one? These are the novels. One. What about the short stories? You know, it's a yeah. lot. It's a lot. She has written a lot. Yes, mm-hmm. I give her that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, good for her. 
<laughs> if people like it, good for them. <laughs> We're not really murder mystery yeah, fans. I'm gonna stay with my fantasy books and my. <laughs> But I mean the idea of them becoming as a sort of jury, each one playing their role. Mm. The actress, like with my daughter, thinks my daughter says my daughter. <laughs> like yes, there was a bit of amusement humor. there mm-hmm. and humor and. And oh, you a collection have, of characters. You should have heard Dan Stevens' accent with the woman. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you really have to. He made it so so southern, like he really nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't like Kenneth this Brona's uh, Kenneth. Um, you didn't like take it? on it like with the woman. Oh, uh, with the woman, it was no, so nasally. Listen, yeah, I don't know. No, listen to Dan Stevens ones. Just yeah, <laughs> you'll even for someone who hasn't like listened to the audiobook before, go ahead and listen to it. I really mm. recommend either just for the performance. Yeah, for the performance alone, it's really yeah. entertaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. While you're cooking or doing something, yeah. Something else, I I found myself. Uh, sort of adapting, like they call each other's uh, each other's <laughs> each other, <laughs> Monsieur and Madame. Yeah, and, and they uh, just put an M. Yes, and I'm like, and it's different than Mister and Ma'am and Mrs. and mm-hmm. and like I felt like when I'm talking to strangers I, or or like men, I want to call them Monsieur, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like hello, when I'm fr- approaching someone, I want to call him Monsieur. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Imagine if you did. <laughs> oh, I would have been classy. <laughs> I think uh the the not the the books of Agatha Christie are just merely like little little snacks, mm. you know, for readers. Yeah. Like an out. Something to read on a bus going yes. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like I mean long travel. Like yeah. kida, something to finish on a bus on a train. On a train. <laughs> <laughs> wink wink. <laughs> wink wink and tint. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, like other than the dy- the diversity of the characters. Um, and their roles and their quirks, I think, and like maybe the characters had more drama or or guilt or sorrow more than Hercule Poirot, you know? Yes, Hercule Poirot. Hercule Poirot. Hercule. <laughs> At your service. <laughs> I say it in the American Hercule. <laughs> Hercule, just because I feel so ridiculous when and I say it in French. Hercule. <laughs> Hercule. <laughs> Well, in the in the movie, it was kind of hinted at that he keeps like correcting his name. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, yes. That gave it Hercule. Some... Hercule Poirot. <laughs> Hercule. <laughs> All right, fine. Hercule, whatever. <laughs> I find myself repeating after him, but that wasn't in the book, and I. I you know what know. else I loved in the movie? The flashbacks mm-hmm. when he tried to figure out something. Uh huh. While he was narrating the thing happening, they actually showed the scene. Yeah. You know, I love it when that mm. when they do that. Yes. Like the director chooses to actually visually show uh, show you the scene that are, mm. might have happened. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did it happen this way? Did it? And not? even when he was looking at them, the camera movement with the point of view. Oh, and it was amazing. The mm. the uh, the view angle from uh, from the top. Yes. You could see and them looking at him passing. One of my favorite scenes is the one before he enters with the camera into the room from the top. Mm -hmm. So he has the camera in the hallway on the train. And Mm -hmm. you can just see characters coming into the shot, going into the room, coming out going in again and you don't see what is in the room mm. you know <laughs> you're like god damn it just show me what's in the room i want to see <laughs> you know that's when they found the body that uh, was the scene uh, okay yes, yeah. and then finally when hercule poirot arrived um hercule poirot arrived <laughs> <laughs> and entered the room that's when they uh, entered the room with the camera so they were like nope we're not entering the room until Hercule Poirot arrives and that and that like stays with the point of view of him he's the one telling the story we like, the audience don't know anything until he knows it and sees it and hears exactly. it exactly the story moves with him mm-hmm. exactly yeah yes he stops moving we stop moving he mm-hmm. goes we go yeah know? it's like I guess 
overall, um, the movie is much better uh-huh. in, in, from this perspective. Yes. Um, we probably would have ended up on the safer side if we read the book first and, and, and then watched the movie, which we would recommend for you to do if you want to read Murder on the Orient Express. We're not going to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. The, let's try harder. Who was your favorite character? Who was my favorite character? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's difficult to say. <laughs> I can't remember all of them. Okay. Can you remind me? Uh, there was Miss Debenham. Mm. I loved her character, Mrs. Hub- Hubbard. Ah, yes, the actress. The actress and her mm-hmm. performance was insane. Mm-hmm. She, and she's the one who explained it all in the end. Like, she, like... She looked so guilty in an obvious way. You think it's not her at mm-hmm. all, you know? Because I want mom. My mom watches murder mysteries all the time. Like uh-huh. it's her thing. Yeah. Maybe that's why I'm fed up with them. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? So there's this kind of pattern, you know? Mm-hmm. Those who are so obvious when you look at them, it's like okay, they definitely did it. They're usually not the ones because mm-hmm. like. The directors want to throw you off. They want to like, okay, no, that's too obvious. It's too easy. It can't be her or him, Mm -hmm. you know, Yeah. in the moment. But I think from the performance wise, because she was so dramatic, you know, and so involved in everything. She wanted to know what's going Uh on all the time. Yes. So I think Miss Hubbard, Hubbard? Hubbard, yeah. Hubbard. Mrs. Hubbard was... One of my favorites. My daughter thinks. What would my daughter think? What would my daughter <laughs> say? Who else I was there? I think I would like Mary Debenham. Mm. Okay. <gasps> yes. Oh, my God. And uh, Princess... Uh, what? Dragomif? Drag- something. Something. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> and... Um, he was there, too? Wait. Book? He was the train conductor. Oh. You know who he looks like? The guy from Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I like the Countess. Like the Countess? In the book. Like she didn't appear that much in the movie mm-hmm, and she was mm-hmm. sort of on drugs. Yeah. Or like sleep drugs, but in the movie yeah. I liked her. Right, uh, with the overprotective uh, boyfriend or husband. Husband. Or husband. husband, yes, yes, right, right. <laughs> Those were very cute. Yeah. Mm. Right. So, Miss Mrs. Hubbard, Hubbard, okay, Mary Deben, Debenham, Debenham. Um, who else? Countess, the Countess. We'll just call her the Countess because <laughs> I can't see her second name. <laughs> yeah. Do we have anything else to add? No. No. <laughs> so. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this episode, chapter. Yes. And we hope you enjoyed the book. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you do. And we'll see you in the next one. Um, five feet apart. Yeah. Five feet apart. Five I think. feet apart. We're still going with movies <laughs> and TV shows. All yes. right. Thank you for making it till the end of this chapter. We hope your journey on our express was amusing. We hope you decide to travel with us again. Our next stop is chapter 29, Five Feet Apart, by authors Lipankot, Daughtry, and Iconis. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. We post on Wednesdays. Mark the page for chapter 29. (laughs) That was good.